All right. We ready? Okay. So take a look at number seven. Okay, so last time we talked about taking the derivative, writing equations and tangent lines, finding where certain slopes happen. So now read number seven. Here's what it says. Okay, you want to find all the x values. Okay, you want to find all of the x values where this graph is parallel to this graph. Okay, here is how we tell where equations are parallel to each other. Okay, what do you remember about parallel lines? Anything? They have the same slope. They have the same slope. Fill in the blank here. If graphs are parallel, they should have the same slope. So here's what the strategy is going to be. We're going to find the slope of this line by taking the derivative. We're going to find the slope of this line by taking the derivative, and then we're going to set them equal. Okay, so let's write the steps down, then we'll do it. So step number one, you're going to find the derivative. And I'm saying derivatives, plural, because we have an F and a Y. Okay, and then once we have both of those, because we know that parallel slopes are equal, we're going to set them equal to each other. So we're going to let f prime, which is the derivative of the cubic function, equal y prime, which will be the derivative of the straight line. OK, so let's do it. Look at your equation. We learned how to take derivatives last week. What's the derivative of this? Let's go one term at a time. I have an x cubed. What's the derivative of that? A 3x squared minus. Then I have an x squared. What's the derivative? 2x. Then I have a plus 2x. Plus 2. Okay, that is the end of my derivative for f. Now let's take the derivative of y. What's the derivative of 3x? 3. And then what about the minus 4? goes away. Now, remember that we talked about last class that if you have a line, the derivative comes out just to be a number because the slope's always the same on a line. So like this would always be up three over one, up three over one, doesn't matter where you are. Okay, from here, let's solve. This is a quadratic equal to three. What does it need to equal for me to solve it? So minus the three across. That gives me three X squared. Minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, from here, we want to solve by factoring. So a, b, c, set up your chart. a, c at the top, basement at the bottom. a, c is going to be 3 times negative 1. What will we get? Negative 3. And the only way to times to get 3 since it's prime is 1 times 3. What's my basement number? Negative two, which means that when I subtract, do I want to put the minus on the one or the three side? The three, very good. So I have x plus one and x minus three. Okay, from here, if your a is a one, you're done. Is your a a one now? What was your a? Was it a one? The three, then we're not done. We have to divide and slide over three. So if my a is not a one, I put over three over three. If it will divide, I'm going to do it. If it won't, I'm going to slide it. So can one divide by three? No, then I'm going to make that a three x plus one. Can three divide by three? Yes, what's that? Negative one, thank you. Okay, then from there, I'm going to write my answers. If my parentheses is a minus one, then my solution will come out to be x equals what? Positive one. And then if my x has a plus one, I'm going to change that to a minus one. Where does the three end up? Okay, underneath as a divide by. Okay, so we got our two answers. 
Now we're going to go to the graph and we're going to show why those are the answers. So I want you on your grid to graph 3x minus 4. Okay, so here's your function f of x right here. This is f. Now let's graph y. So this is a y equals mx plus b. So where am I going to be getting on the y-axis? Negative 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4. And then if 3 is my slope, I'm going to rise 3, run 1. Rise 3, run 1. So starting here, 1, 2, 3, over 1. 1, 2, 3, over 1. 1, 2, 3, over 1. And then connect the dots. Okay, there's my straight line. Okay, here's what we just found. The tangent line is going to be parallel to the line you just graphed at these two numbers. Let's start with positive one. So one would be here. Make sure you're on like the curve or whatever. And then I want you to do your best to draw in a tangent line to the curve at that point. So remember, I want to kind of perfectly match my slope at that spot. And then what I see is that my curve's tangent line has the identical slope to the 3x minus 4. Okay, there's my first place that that slope matches. Okay, then there was one other place at negative a third. So estimate about where that would be. Okay, a third would be maybe like here-ish. And then if I kind of trace that tangent line in, I should have an identical slope to the one that we just did. So it would look like that. Okay. And it doesn't have to look perfect, but both of these spots, the graph of my cubic function is parallel to my red line graph. Okay. All right. We're just going to do one more. Um, let's do just, we'll just do the next one. Number eight. So f of x is negative 2x plus ln x. And I want it to be parallel to a fourth x minus 2. So let's start off by taking the derivative here. What is the derivative of negative 2x? Okay, it would just be a negative 2. And then for my plus ln x, this is one of your specials. Does anyone remember the derivative for ln x? No, e is its own derivative. ln x is a formula. Do you remember it? It's 1 over x. Okay, so I'll write it over here to the side. D, D, X, L, N, X is 1 over X. Okay, that's one of your specials, but it's already in your notes. Okay, parallel to 1 fourth X minus 2. 1 fourth X minus 2. What would the derivative be of that? Just a fourth, very good. Okay, so this is the equation of my curve set equal to the slope equation for my line. Okay, we want to solve this. How do I get rid of a minus 2? Okay, plus 2 on both sides. But when I'm adding 2 to a fraction, I want to make it the same type. So remember, we talked about last time that if I want this to be over 4, I can times by 4 on bottom and on top. So what is that fraction going to be now? Uh, so before you add it, it would be 8 over 4, which will then go to 9 over 4 direct. Okay, so I turned my 2 into an 8 over 4 so that I can add it with 1 over 4 to get 9 over 4. Okay, from here. Okay. If I want to, I can cross multiply, or if you just flip both sides, that's also allowed. So if I do the reciprocal of 1 over x, if I flip it, it'd be x over 1. And then if I flip it on this side, what would I get? 4 over 9. Okay. But if you want to cross multiply, you'd have 9x equals 4. 
and then you still divide the nine to the bottom, you get zero. Okay, so now let's do it on your graph. Ready? Graph one fourth x minus two. So minus two would be here. And then one fourth would be rise one, run four. Rise one, run four. Oh wait, I said that wrong. No, wait, I said it right. So up one over one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We have to rise one run four. Thank you for fixing that. Sorry, the this is two. This is four. Okay, then we could even do it one more. Oh wait, is this a two? So this would be one, this would be four. Sorry. And then up one, this would be four. Okay. It'll be like that. Okay, there's my line on the struggle bus, a little graphing that, but hopefully we got it. Okay, and then if I were to find four ninths on the x axis, which is like about a half, okay, so we'll estimate that'd be close to a half. So if this is two, this is one, this is a half. Okay, then if you were to draw in your tangent line, it would be perfectly parallel to the red line that you just graphed. Okay, so for parallels, you take both derivatives, set them equal for each, to each other, and that'll show you where that parallel slope happens. Got it? Okay, and so transition to your other notes, please. Okay, that you picked up today. We're gonna talk about differentiability Okay, so um, if we could put computers up for right now, please. Can you? Okay, so for differentiability, okay, continuity means that your graph is connected. So I'm gonna put continuous means that your graph is connected. Differentiable means that your graph is smooth. Okay, so when I'm looking at my graph, if I want it to be differentiable, okay, this is kind of like layman's terms. You would say you want your graph to be smooth. You don't want any sharp corners. You don't want any breaks in the graph. So when I'm looking at this graph, it says, tell me everywhere that the graph is not differentiable. So box that for me. There are four things you need to look for. Okay, the first one is any discontinuity. So looking at this graph that you have on your paper, where is there a discontinuity? Okay, x equals four, your graph is not differentiable. Here's why. The definition of differentiable, if you look right here, here's what it says, is that your derivative has to exist. So the first thing you would have to do is go to four, you'd have to draw a tangent line and then find its slope. Right, that's what a derivative is. Okay, but the problem is, how can I have a tangent line if my graph ends off in two different places? So I'm gonna put underneath that, okay, the problem with four is that I can't even draw a tangent line. Okay, because there's a disconnect in the graph. And remember that your tangent line is supposed to lay right next to the graph and match its slope. So if your graph's cut into two pieces, you can't do that. So any disconnects in the graph are not differentiable. Okay, type number two is a cusp. And type number three is a corner. A cusp is gonna be like a sharp turn. A corner would also be a sharp turn, but both sides are straight. Okay, so anything like that is not differentiable, and it's for the exact same reason. If I try to use my pen, okay, to draw in a tangent line, I can't ever match both sides because of that little finger prick, you know what I mean? So both of these, I'm going to say, can't draw tangent lines. 
Okay, because there's no way for the graph to lay smoothly up against that because of how sharp the turn is. Okay, the last type is going to be a vertical tangent. Okay, a vertical tangent. And we talked, you had one like this on your homework last time. Um, your graph goes vertical right about here. Okay, so if you'll put x equals 11. And here's the problem with that. Okay, first question, can I draw my tangent line laying right next to the graph at that point? Yes. The problem is that after I draw the tangent line, I'm supposed to find its slope. And if my line is perfectly up and down, what is the slope of that line? If it's vertical, undefined. So I'm going to put under vertical tangent, I can draw it. But its slope or derivative is undefined. So for a vertical tangent, you can draw the line, but you can't calculate the slope because it's perfectly up and down, which is an undefined slope. Okay, uh, I forgot to write your cusp points. Where do those happen at? What X is? A and negative one and three. Okay, so there are a couple questions on your homework that ask you to write all of the places your graph is not differentiable. So let's take a look at the first graph. Okay, I'm looking for these four things, any disconnects, any cusps or corners, and any vertical tangents. So if I want it to be not differentiable, list those points for me, please. Okay, not differentiable. Okay, tell me at least one place on the first graph. Okay, negative three is one of them. What type is it? Cusp. Okay, but really a cusp and a corner are kind of different. Okay, tell me one other place. Three is correct. What type is three? A vertical tangent, very good. And remember, at three, I could draw the vertical or the um, tangent line, but I can't find its slope. Okay. Do you feel like you could do that pretty easily? There's one other thing that I want to just make a distinction between. Okay, find all of the places on this graph where your slope is horizontal, not vertical, but horizontal. If you have a horizontal slope, that's where your graph kind of flattens out to zero is like this. So I have one here, I have one here, and I have one here. Okay, for all four, all three of those spots, I was able to draw the tangent line, and then I have to be able to calculate its slope. Can I do that for a horizontal line? Yes or no? Yes. What's the slope of a horizontal line? Zero. So if it's a horizontal tangent, I'm going to put that is differentiable. Because I do have a defined slope, my slope is zero. So remember that the problem with a vertical is not that it's just horizontal or vertical. It's that verticals don't have a slope versus horizontals do, and it's zero. So for an HT, a horizontal tangent, okay, it is still differentiable. Are we good with that? Okay, go ahead and turn the page. We're gonna skip the second one. You'll do several examples of those on your side. <clears throat> okay, so in order for your graph to be differentiable, okay, let's write our formal definition. Step number one, is that your left and right limits need to be the same. Okay, so your limit from the left, your limit from the right, they need to be equal. 
Step number two is you have to have a y value. These should look familiar. Okay, f of a needs to be defined. And then step number three, do you know what it is? What is they have to equal each other. So my limit as x approaches a needs to equal f of a. What are those the parts of? They tell me whether a graph is continuous. Okay, now let's talk about on your front page, what we just wrote is that if it's not continuous, it automatically can't be differentiable. So the first three parts of checking if it's differentiable are really just making sure that it's continuous. Okay, then you're just gonna add one more step. Okay, the last step is that you're gonna take the limit from the left and the right of the derivatives and make sure that they match each other. So this is the last step, the limit as X approaches A from the left of the derivative needs to equal the limit as X approaches A from the right of the derivative. But the first three pieces, you already know how to do because you already took a test over, yes? So that checks what checks for corners? It checks for corners and cusps and verticals, correct. Okay, so we're only going to do two of these because it's a couple steps, but let's just look at the very next one. Look at number one. The first thing I want to check is the limit from the left, the limit from the right, and I want to make sure that they equal each other. So put your first little I here. We're going to approach three from the left first, then from the right second. If I want x from the left, do I plug into the greater than three or the less than three piece? Less than three if it's the left side. So I'm going to plug in a three here. So it's going to be two times three squared minus four times three plus. Okay, then just to speed up our arithmetic there, that's two times three squared minus four times three plus eight, that comes out to 14. So my left side limit is 14. Now let's do the right side limit. I'm gonna do X greater than three, which is gonna be six times three, and then minus four. Six times three is how many? 18. 18 take away four would be 14. So step number one, left and right both came out to 14. I go on to part two. For part two, my Y value has to be defined. Now this could be its own piece in the piecewise, or you could have an equal to on one of the pieces. Does one of these have an equal to? Okay, the bottom, but they came out the same anyways. What did it equal? 14, right? So for step two, f of three is 14. Step number three, they had to match, which they do. So I'm just going to state that, that the y value and the limit both came out to be 14. Now, for your homework today, do I expect you to perfectly model this structure? No. Okay, but if it was on a test, that was where you would want to follow it more closely. Okay, so this tells me my graph is continuous. Okay, so I'm going to put, therefore, it is continuous. Now let's check and see if it's also differentiable. So we're going to take the function f, and we're going to calculate its derivative. Okay, for a piecewise, you're going to do the derivative of each piece on its own. So let's do the top piece first. It's a 2x squared minus 4x plus 8. What's the derivative of that? Okay, 4x minus 4, very good. Okay, that would be for any x is less than 3. Now look at the bottom piece. 6x minus 4, what's the derivative of that? Just a 6. And then I'm going to plug in three to both pieces and make sure that they match each other. If they do, it's differentiable. If they do not, then it's not different. 
So limit x approach 3 from the left of f prime of x. Okay, notice that this isn't still f. Now this is the derivative. Okay, then I'll do the same thing here for the right side. <laughs> okay, let's do my left side first. I'm taking a 3. I'm plugging it in. What's 4 times 3? 12 take away 4. Okay, that is 8. Very good. Okay, my right side is just 6. And notice, I don't even have anywhere to plug in the 3, but it doesn't matter. Because since it was a line, my slope is just 6. Okay, do they match or no? Okay, then therefore, it is not differentiable. So what that tells you in your head is that the graph is connected, but it's not smooth. It either has a cusp or a corner or it goes vertical. Something weird happens in the graph for it to not be different. Get the idea? Okay. Uh, let's do just one more of those. Uh, let's, I guess, just do number two. All right, so first thing it says, is it continuous and or differentiable? Let's see. Okay, first we are plugging in zero to the top and the bottom to see if they match. So I'm going to do my left limit here, my right limit over here. Okay, I'm plugging in a zero. Remember, less than corresponds with the left side. So it'd be 3e to the zero plus 2. 3e to the zero plus 2. What is e to the zero, though? So really, that's just 3 times 1 plus 2, which is going to come out to be 5. For my x greater than, that would be my right side. So I'm going to have 3 times 0 squared plus 8 times 0 plus 5. What is that going to come out to be also? 5. Okay, so step number one, these guys match each other. Part two, if x equals 0 has its own part of the piecewise, I pick it, or it could be uh, sneaked into the other part, which in this case I have an equal to here. So I'm going to also get Then in my third part, I make sure those all match each other, and they do. So I'm just going to state it, that my limit as x approaches 0 equals the y value at 0, which is 5. So my graph is continuous. OK, for differentiability, you're going to take the derivative and then check the limits from the left to the right. So f prime of x equals? Open up your piecewise here. Okay, do we remember the derivative of e to the x? Ln goes to 1 over x. What about e, though? It's its own derivative. So 3e e to the x is going to stay a 3e e to the x. But what will happen with the plus 2? goes away because it's a constant. From my bottom piece, can you take the derivative, please? What would that be? 6x plus, six. Six plus 8. And then my breakpoint was still 0. So I plug in 0 to both parts, see if they match each other. So my limit as x approaches 0 from the left, and my limit as x approaches 0 from the right. OK. Look at my work. What's wrong? That on the AP test, I wouldn't even get credit for this. I mean, aside from that, I haven't done it. I didn't put the prime. This is not this. This is not plugging in here. If this is f prime. I need to make sure that I put f prime in my limit. Okay. Then from there, I'd have three e to the zero. What is that going to equal? Okay, three times one is three. And then on the other side, I have a zero plugged in here. It's six times zero plus eight, which comes out to be eight. So what would our conclusion be here? Is it 
Continuous and differentiable or continuous but not differentiable? A continuous but not differentiable. Good. All right. Not differentiable. Okay. There is one other type of question that you will encounter on your homework. And so if it's okay, I'd just like to cover that last type and then we can be done. So if you'll go to your very back page, take a look for me, please, at we'll do eight, then six. Okay, here's what it says. Find the values of A and B to make the function B differentiable. Now, if your graph is differentiable, that means that it also has to be continuous. Okay, if it's differentiable, it also had to be continuous. So here's the plan. If we want it to be continuous, we're gonna let the left and the right sides be equal, just like we did two weeks ago. But then to make it differentiable, we're gonna let the left and right derivatives be equal to each other. So I'm gonna put over here, we're gonna set left equal to right, and then plug in BP. Okay, remember that BP stands for break point. That's where you switch from one piece of the graph to the next. Then we're gonna set L prime equal to R prime and then plug in X equal to the break point. Okay. And technically, it doesn't matter which order you do them in, but I'm usually going to do this one first, just because we already have the original. Yep. Okay, so are we ready? Let's do it. AX cubed, set it equal to on your paper, please. AX cubed equal to um, X squared plus B. And then we're going to plug in that X equals So now we're going to have a two cubed and a two squared. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'll center. Thank you. Okay, two cubed is how many? So this is 8a equal to. Two squared is four plus b. Okay, then we get to this point. We have two unknowns. We don't know what a is and we don't know what b is. That's where we're going to come over here to our second side. Okay, now what are we going to set equal? Left prime and right prime. So on the top, what is the derivative of ax cubed? 3a in the front, and then what power on x now? 3 times down on a is 3ax squared equal to? On the bottom, what's the derivative of x squared? Okay, 2x. Now, v is standing in for a constant. So even though I don't know what it is, what's the derivative of a constant? Zero, so the b goes away. Yeah. So from here, I know that that needs to happen. x equals 2. And then I'm just going to take the 2 and plug it in. So this is 3 times 2 squared is 4. And then 2 times 2 here is another 4. What is 3a times this 4 here? 12a. So 12a equals 4. Then from there, divide the 12 across. And my a is equal to 4 over 12. Now, if you're not good at simplifying fractions, calculator will do it for you. Alpha link 4 over 12 is going to reduce to a third. <laughs> now, remember, the question asks you to find values of a and b. So you're not done yet. We're going to come back to this equation and say, okay, well, now that I know A is a third, let me go back and find B. So it's going to be 8 times a third equals 4 plus B. 8 times a third is really just 8 thirds. How am I going to get rid of this plus 4 on this side? How are we going to get rid of that plus 4? Minus 4, very good. So I'm going to put minus 4 here, minus 4 here. So I have 
B equals eight thirds take away four. Now, remember we talked about, you're trying to subtract these. You need to have the same denominator. So if I need my four to have a three on bottom, I have to also times it on top. So it's gonna be three times three, which means that now four times three on top is how many? 12 thirds, and what's eight thirds? Take away 12 thirds. Very good. Eight thirds take away 12 thirds gives me negative four thirds. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. Uh, we have to do one more where there's a substitution. So let's do number six. Okay, well, you set the originals equal and set the derivatives equal. Okay, number six, same page. We're doing the top one now. So set the originals equal, then set the derivatives equal. And then remember, you're plugging in your break point for the x. Okay, eventually you're going to have to give up on the first side and then go to the derivative. So once you have it kind of down to what we had on number eight, move over to your derivative side. Good, that's exactly right. Huh? And then on this part, don't forget that x is three. So three squared is times two b is eighteen. Good. Um, hang on, hang on. Can you put this back on? So do the one and three or times two b, you should be able to do it. Nine and eight minus two. Yes, that's that is right. So that's right. Uh -oh. He already added okay. the cross, but you're not. So you need to find the negative three at the minus six, to the minus nine, and then add the cross number. That's what that means. Yes, that's right. Okay, your left side should have come out. Then 9a minus 2 equals, this came out to 18b minus 9, and then 9a equals 18b minus 7. Okay, this is where I think is a, either here or here. Go ahead and pause there, because at this point, we can't do much with that yet. Okay, now we're going to go over to the next side. Take your derivatives, if you haven't already. Set them equal to each other and then plug in your break point. Okay, so you guys all think this way. No, okay. Um, I think you did this by wrong. This was a 2bx. Yeah, so you do the 3 squared first. What's that? Times 2bx. So you do the 3 squared Wait, no, 
Oh, say that note is for you. So I'm going to see what that means. I don't know. Um, Yes. Yes. Now send me All right. Uh, <laughs> okay. Your derivative side, 3ax is to the 1. So it's 1 times 3a. 3a. And then your x powers down to a 0. So it goes away. Yeah. yeah. Minus 2 goes away because it's a constant already. Equals. What's the derivative of 2bx squared? 4bx. What about minus x? Minus one, what about minus six? six yeah. Goes to zero. Okay, then remember this is at x equals three, which means I'm plugging in a three right here. So I have three a equals four b times three is 12 b minus one. Okay, from here, you're not stuck, but you're gonna have to do a substitution from one equation into the other. It doesn't matter which one you do. I'm gonna solve this one. So I see my 3a equals. How can I get rid of the 3 in front of the a? Divide, Divide by 3. So now I have that a is equal to 12b minus 1 over 3. Okay, then I'm going to take this little nice crap with a b in it, and I'm going to place it where the A is here, so that now I'll have B stuff equal to B stuff, and I can solve. So here we go. We're not doing number seven, and I write too big, so I'm going to keep writing down here. Okay, I have 9A, but now this is going to come take the place of A in my equation. So instead of 9A, now it's 9, 12B minus 1 over 3 equal to 18B minus 7. Okay, from here, uh, I'm going to times the 9 into the top. What is, you? hopefully some of y'all have calculators, what's 9 times 12? 108B minus 9 times 1 is just a minus 9 equals 18B minus 7. Okay, from here. If this side has a big divided by three, how can I undo that? Multiply by three. So I'm going to times by three here, and I'm going to times by three here, which means now these guys cross out. I have 108B minus nine equals, what is three times 18B? 50 what? 54B. Minus 7 times 3 is 21, right? Okay, from here, I've got Bs on both sides. You need to pick one of them to subtract across to B with the other. I'm going to pick the smaller one. So I'm going to minus 54B off both sides. So these guys are going to cross out. So now I have 54B take away from 108 is 54B. Minus 9 equals negative 21. How do I get rid of the minus 9? Okay, add it across. Negative 21 plus 9 gives me how many? Negative 12. Okay. 
And then divide the 54 across. And you'll see that your numbers don't come out quite as nice as the last one. Okay, but these can both divide by six. So what will the top be when I reduce it? Two, and then 54 divided by six would be Okay. Is this my final answer? No. I need an A and a B. I know B, but I still got to go back and find A. So if A is 12B minus one, so A is 12B minus one over three, then I'm going to put my negative two over nine up here. Negative two over nine. I'm subbing that into my A formula, which was originally right here. Okay. All right, let's go one step at a time. What is 12 times two over nine? 12 times two over nine. Um, multiply, so 12 times 2 would be 24 over 9, right? Good. Okay, then I want a minus 1. I'm going to make it 9 over 9. Okay, because remember, I want that to come out to be like numbers that I can actually subtract with each other. So that's negative 24 over 9 minus 9 over 9 is going to give me how many? Negative 33 over 9. And then I want to divide that by 3, make that a 3 over 1, so I can times by a third instead. Okay, so the top of this was a 33 over 9. If I'm dividing by 3, I'm going to copy, change, flip, and multiply that to be a 1 third. So what is 33 divided by 3? 11 over 9 would be your B. Oh, I wrote this. Negative 11 over no. Okay, now let me just say there was an easier way to solve this, but sometimes on Delta Math, the numbers don't come out very nice. That is why when I got to this step, I didn't want to just divide the nine and the three because a lot of the examples online that won't. Okay, if you have questions, raise your hand. You can now do your homework. Okay, so pull out your delta map. Okay, you have 40 minutes to work. Um, you're missed. Okay, so uh, take the derivative on your scrap paper. Yeah. Of equal to zero, right? So we're going to take out the sigma, right? The red is equal to zero. Okay, good. This is where the problem is. Remember, it's not that. Because remember, what to do? Is that equal to zero? Negative two over nine. Missed the last one, but I'll go ahead and cross it back one. So this is the one that's equal to negative. Yes. Okay. Um, and Dawson, did you need me to reset that one? Do y'all need any scrap paper here? Do y'all need any paper over here? Oh, uh, so 
Don't forget to divide and sign over two. Yes. Okay, Linus. All right, Linus, you're reset. Thank you. Uh huh. Dawson, your recess. No, that's not a corner because it doesn't really like come to a point. <laughs> No, oh, asymptote would count because it um, is uh, a break in the graph. <clears throat> okay, real quick. Okay, take a look at the very first question. Okay, it asks you to find, oops, I'm on the wrong one. Hold on. Okay, the instructions on the very first two questions are not the same. So, so to save myself doing a million resets, okay, I want you to just look at this, the instructions on these two questions. Where is it not differentiable? I'm looking for cusps, corners, breaks, and vertical tangents. Can you tell me where I have a break in the graph? This is the first question. Okay, negative seven is correct, also at two. Okay, negative seven and two. Then if you look at this point very carefully, that's not actually a cusp. It kind of looks like it, but it's not. So don't put that. Okay, there is one more spot on this graph. Negative three is correct because what kind of slope is it at negative three? Perfectly vertical is an undefined slope. So for the first question, you should have a total of three answers. You should have negative seven, two and negative three as your third answer. Okay, go to the next question. Type in your answer, but don't push submit. Okay, for question number two. So this one was negative seven, two and negative three. Okay, for the next question, where does this one have breaks in the graph? Okay, two, where else? What other uh, non-differentiable spots? Negative seven is a cusp, where else? Negative two is a vertical tangent, anywhere else? Six, very good. Okay, don't push enter. Okay, this is wrong because the instructions aren't the same. What they want in this question, it doesn't say where is it not differentiable. What does it say? It has to be continuous, but not differentiable. So which of these answers I listed isn't differentiable, but also isn't continuous? Two can't be in my list. If it has to be continuous, but not differentiable, then I can't list two. Okay, so I'm going to have to remove that from one of my answers and put six in that spot instead. Okay. 
So be careful that the type of question, it might say, where is it not differentiable? You're listing all of them. But if it has to be continuous and not differentiable, you can't put that whole list. Okay? Yes. Yes. There's just a few squares in there. Yes? Uh-huh. Sure. 